Hi, so today I want to talk about a case that I found really interesting. I grew up in North Devon, um, I still live in North Devon, and I visit Dartmoor basically pretty much every weekend, and there's kind of, there's still so much more I need to see. Today I wanted to talk about something that is kind of, it's already been covered by so many different outlets, be it books, YouTube videos, um, films, it's been written about a lot, and it's just because it's such a sad story, but it's such an interesting story, um, and it's one that you know, if you're from the area, you'll kind of know it, but you might not know the full story. Unfortunately, pretty much everything that I'm going to talk about today, it is kind of just speculation. We don't know entirely for fact what actually happened throughout Kitty J's life. We only know it in, in chunks, and it is kind of all hearsay, but... I've tried to base my own version of the story on the most sort of common denominator from each section of the story. So if I read something that like was said in two, three or four pages, I'm going to say that that's probably, that might be more likely what was said. So I've tried to go with that theory, but just keep in mind that a lot of this is speculation and just kind of hearsay. So anyway, Long introduction, but um, I'm going to talk about Kitty J. Okay, so this is based within what is known as the centre of Dartmoor, which is Widdicombe in the Moor. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful place to visit. Um, I'm so privileged that I have it, you know, kind of down the road, really. Um, I'm so lucky. To, to have this beautiful, beautiful national park, literally on my doorstep. And Widdicombe in the Moor is especially beautiful. So keeping in mind the area that this is set in, I'm now gonna, gonna talk about Kitty. So Kitty was born in 1790. Um, if I'm looking down quite a lot, it's because I've, I've got my little handy dandy book of notes. She was an orphan child and she was almost immediately taken to Walborough Workhouse. Um, this is in Newton Abbott and when she was taken there because she was an orphan and they didn't know any, her parents, they didn't know anything about her, all they had is that she was female. So what was kind of the thing at the time, what they would do in these workhouses when they would get young babies coming in, um, is they would basically give the baby an initial, much like they do with um, with cattle. And I think they do the same with like storms, am I right? I think, but, so you start, you know, obviously at A and then it works in alphabetical order down the list um, until you, you know, you get to your, your next, what would then be name. Hers was J, but by this time, a lot of the Christian names, beginning with J, had already been taken for females. So they decided that she would be called J, J-A-Y. Unfortunately at the time, um, J was like a, a slang word for prostitute. So they decided to give her another name um, at the beginning and she became Mary J. At some point she picked up the name Kitty and not many people really know why. Um, some people think that it was um, later on, he'll talk about in a minute, but some people think it was her lover who, who gave her that name when she began working. But nobody really knows why she picked up that nickname. But from the moment she left the orphanage, she was known as Kitty J. But during her younger years, at her time in the workhouse, she was known as Mary J. When she reached her teenage years, it was time for her to get a job and she successfully got a job and she was an apprentice at a farm. Some say this farm was called Canna Farm and in other places it was called Barnacott Farm. 
But this farm was just outside Manhattan and it was an extremely hard job. She was worked so hard as an apprentice. Um, it was real like back breaking work, really struggled every single day. And unfortunately they, they didn't get the pay to match with luxuries being considered things like, you know, a hot meal, clothes, you know, nice warm clothes. Um, yeah, so you know, poor Kitty J, you know, working tirelessly, probably hating life, feeling like there was no hope, feeling like she would just spend the rest of her days doing something like this, something she was forced into in some ways, um, just to survive, basically. And the reason I talk about that so much is in like her luxuries and kind of what she went through at the farm is because you kind of need to understand how much of a, a situation she must have been in to kind of do what she did next, which again, what I'm about to explain is very much kind of folklore. There was some fact in, you know, her her upbringing in the workhouse and and all of that sort of stuff. But what happens next is folklore because none of it is on record. So when she was working at the farm as an apprentice, she met the farmer's son and they began a love affair. She began kind of getting to know him better and their love affair grew with the promise that the farmer's son allegedly had told Kitty that he wanted to marry her so he kind of promised her marriage and to Kitty this farmer's son was kind of like her ray of light her hope you know her her step out of poverty you know if you think you are working that tirelessly every day you don't even have a family to fall back on you've got nobody else around you but what you do have here is a farmer's son who has money in the family you know kitty had decided in her mind that that would gain her a better life so she began seeing more and more of the farmer's son unfortunately very early into her relationship i say relationship because i, I don't know how quickly this all escalated um but during her relationship um with the farmer's son she got pregnant extremely quickly and this at that time obviously was completely shocking you know pregnant out of wedlock how dare she and unfortunately the person who got the blame was kitty the farmer's son told his parents to which his parents response was kitty threw herself at their son and that's what got her pregnant So unfortunately, because this kind of spread, the farmers had a lot more clout than her and she was a woman pregnant out of wedlock. She was branded a slut and told to leave the farm. Now you have to imagine how Kitty must have felt at this time. You know, her, she had, you know, two things in her life at that time. So she had a, a, a sort of secure job. She then had a chance that she might marry into money but both of those things were taken from her the second she got pregnant and imagine how scary that must have been during that time she could not return to um, the work how she'd grown up in for fear of shame um, you know that they would say the same thing back to her and she had a baby on the way it must have been absolutely terrifying absolutely terrifying as far as society was concerned she was branded unemployable and a slut these are different times it breaks my heart to say that kitty j decided that her only option was to take her life she hung herself um, in one of the barns on the farm she was working in and that was the end of Kitty J's really sad and tragic short life and unfortunately it only gets sadder from here so then came the burial what do we do with Kitty J 
Vickers refused to bury her. It was refusal at Widdicombe, North Bothy and Manhattan. This was because she was not allowed to be buried on sacred church ground. It was also 1823, a time where people that committed suicide also couldn't be buried on sacred ground. So the solution then, at that time, it was decided that if you had committed suicide, you would be buried on a crossroads. These people were often buried with a stake through the heart so that the potential troubled spirit couldn't haunt the village or wherever was nearby. Sadly, it was decided that Kitty would be buried on the wayside on a cold, damp, misty part of Dartmoor. This was overlooked by the opposing hound tour. And if you've ever been to Dartmoor, it's a truly beautiful but quite ominous place. She was buried at the crossroads of a miner's track where the three parishes meet. The so-called funeral was attended by only three men who were all paid for by the parish to dig her grave and cover her body with dirt. No one mourned for her. She was left alone and forgotten. This was the tragic tale of Kitty J. So she was forgotten for 40 years. 40 years had gone by when James, and I think this is pronounced Byant or Byrant. He seemed to have like quite a few professions, I suppose, investments. Um, I, I read that he was um, like somebody who fixed roads. I also read that he rebuilt um, Prospect Hall or Beaconsfield Hall, as it's now known, I think. But he had some men working on the crossroads. 40 years later, okay? The men were digging and all of a sudden one of their spades hit something hard in the ground. He pulled out the spade and began inspecting the dirt, pulling away all the roots and chucking away the stones. When he looked down, he saw bones. He almost dismissed the bones as, you know, like an old animal carcass. There's lots and lots and lots of wildlife on Dartmoor. Lots of cattle, lots of sheep, horses, everything. And you find bones all the time. However, the man kept digging. And as he began digging, he started to grow suspicious of the bones. He collected them. And as he did so, he began to realize that this was a rough grave. He then reported back to James Bryant. The bones were investigated and were shown to be human. As people began to ask questions amongst the men, they began to ask the locals, where the locals suddenly started to remember the, the young girl that was buried around that area some sort of 40 years ago. James ordered that the bones be put in a box and reburied in the exact spot they were found. However, this time the grave would be made very clear. What they did is they built up the ground around the box and that's what you see there today. Then in 1970, Dartmoor National Trust um, decided to put some stones, some large stones around the edge of the grave to protect it because you do, like I said before, you get a lot of cattle, um, sheep, horses, all sorts out on Dartmoor and it was just to kind of protect her grave a little more. I visited the grave with my husband um, probably maybe a couple of months ago um, and weirdly, it's even on the ordnance um, map when you, because we've, we've got it all on our phones because we go walking there so much and there's barely any signal in most places so it's very handy to have it on your phone and it's marked as Jay's grave if ever you want to find it um, on a map. It is marked but it's marked Jay's grave. So the next part of the tale is kind of the more um, paranormal side. Um, whether you choose to believe that or not, it's up to you. Um, but there are some incredibly interesting stories um, from both locals and visitors. The first of those is it is said that very often you can see a dark figure either hovering or kneeling at her grave. And the dark figure is almost always in a hooded coat whilst looking over the grave. This isn't just something that has been seen nearer 
to the time of her burial. This is still seen today. Um, there were quite a few reports online that people had seen this figure either hovering or kneeling at the grave. There's a lot of debate as to who this might be. Some say it's Kitty herself. Um, some say that it could be perhaps the farmer's son, riddled with guilt, um, you know, crouching down to mourn Kitty. Although I doubt it. He seemed like a douche. One of the most famous paranormal happenings around that area is to do with the flowers that are left at her grave. Now, in pretty much every photo you'll find of Kitty J's grave, there will be some sort of flowers there, whether they're real or plastic. Um, there's normally always money there, sometimes there's like little ornaments left there, little votives, candles, all sorts. Um, they're kind of left on the grave at all times, but um, in the early days, there would always be fresh flowers and what was weird is nobody ever saw anybody leaving them um, on the grave they would just kind of appear there and they would appear there through all the seasons they would always be different sorts of flowers throughout the years and nobody could work out who was leaving these flowers on kitty's grave now of course this could be a local paying their respects to a very tragic life story you know, wanting, I don't know, just feeling like somebody should mourn for her. So maybe they decided to do something kind and and always make her grave a very peaceful and beautiful looking place. But of course, others say that ghosts leave them there. Believe what you want to believe. One theory as well is that um, there was a lady called Beatrice Chase who was a writer and she's described in pretty much everywhere I've read she is described as eccentric so some believe that she was the one leaving the flowers there however she did die in 1955 and the flowers still kept appearing there was a horrible time um, I think it was like maybe 2000 sort of time maybe like 2000 2001 um, I remember because I, I was still at school and that I remember this time so well. Um, but there was something called foot and mouth and it was a real epidemic that spread throughout the UK. Um, I'm not sure about how far across Europe it's, it spread, but in the UK it was a huge, huge thing and it was incredibly sad. Um, yeah, so many animals were killed. So many animals were killed. It was a really horrible time. Um, you know, there were farmers committing suicide. It was, it was a horrible time. But also, I can remember being at school and you would have to have your shoes, like you'd get in a tub of disinfectant with your shoes on every day before you started school. And that was to kind of prevent the disease spreading and you taking it home with you. And yeah, I, re I remember it so well, it was horrible. And the reason I'm telling you this is because Dartmoor National Park was pretty much closed off to the public during that time, again, to prevent the disease from spreading. But locals that lived actually, like lived in the area, not, not tourists, because obviously you're not allowed there, but the people that lived there said that the flowers still appeared on Kitty J's grave. So it was either somebody in the village or it is actually a ghost. I wouldn't like to say that this is or still isn't happening today, but I will say that the flowers that are there now are pretty much all plastic. Um, so I don't think it is, but it's it's just a very interesting mystery. Yeah, but I think either way, it's, it's just nice that those flowers are kind of drawing the attention to the grave and maybe people are looking more into her death and what happened and why it's there like it is. Um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, whether you, whether you believe in the paranormal side of things or you don't, hopefully it will make somebody just look into her story and maybe think of her for a few moments. When I visited the site, I just felt very, I just felt very sad. I didn't feel like it was a bad place. Um, personally, I felt like it was quite peaceful, but all I did was try and think of what she must have gone through and how awful that that time must have must have been for her um 
yeah, I, I, I just paid my respects to her and yeah, I carried on my walk. So speaking of some of the things that have been left on her grave, um, some of those things uh, involve people leaving money. Um, something I did read was um, there was like an article with some comments at the end and two girls um, went to the grave. One of them was called Danielle and she left some money on the grave and when she put the money down she heard somebody behind her say, Danielle, I'm behind you. Ugh. Locals say in regard to the flowers that they have actually seen ghostly figures leaving the flowers on the grave. They also say that they feel that Kitty doesn't like the tourists coming to look at her grave. They say that if you do visit there, you have to leave either money or flowers because if you don't, you'll get bad luck. Which I will say, I didn't leave anything there. And now I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't read this until after I'd been there. Oh. So speaking of the money left there, there was also a comment from a guy who said that when he was at school, he and one of his friends didn't get very much pocket money that week. And they decided that when they walked past Kitty J's grave, as there was money always left there, they would take whatever was left on the grave. They stole the money, so they began walking back down the road towards their school, when all of a sudden they heard some horses behind them. So they began walking a bit quicker, and the horses got louder and louder and louder. They turned around, and what they saw was six horses, a carriage, and a headless driver man said that obviously it scared the bejesus out of them and they just ran home or back to their school wherever it is they came from they threw the money on their way back and although like i said i never sensed anything ominous there but there are quite a few tales from locals that just sort of say that sort of thing that you know the whole bad luck thing if you don't leave money there and bad things happen if you don't respect the area um but you know, I also read that a lot of the locals will like drive miles to avoid her grave because they're so in fear of it, which I didn't sense any of that when I was there, but then that's just me. So the reason I wanted to kind of sit down and, and tell this story is just that I really hope that her tale doesn't get forgotten. It's incredibly sad, incredibly sad. And yeah, I, I hope that she's at peace now and I hope she doesn't get too upset that people come to the grave because I think a lot of people do go there with good intentions um, just to kind of pay their respects and kind of mourn for her in a time that was very different to ours and realise how lucky we are now. So that's the story of Kitty J and I'm sorry if I got some things wrong um, but you know if there's anything you guys want to add then then please do so because I'm so interested. Um, yeah, it'd be good to kind of get a few other other people talking about some of their stories they've got on Dartmoor or anything else they want me to look into. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll see you soon.